Hi friends, how is everybody? I hope you've had a good couple of weeks since I was here last and I'm glad to see you here. Um, I hope everybody got through Father's Day okay. I want to talk about some things that I went through on Father's Day um, and the day before, Saturday and Sunday. And maybe you can relate to it or maybe it will give you some thoughts or something, I don't know. But before I do that, I wanna talk a little bit about some things that are going on with me, with my health and stuff. I've been the healthiest person on the planet for forever. And I have been to more doctors in the last year than I have in the last 10 years. And I'm still healthy, but I have a couple of issues. Um, and I just wanted to share them with you guys. And if you have any thoughts or input or advice or help that you can give me, I'm looking for it, okay? So thank you for that ahead of time. <laughs> um, number one is um, when I got the virus last January, you guys know that I had that. And I did spend two days in the hospital and at that time, um, they ran, you know, when they get you in there, they're gonna run everything, run through, run you through everything under the sun, trying to find something. And so they did, and they did. <laughs> and they found a small um, blood clot on my left lung. And they said it was very small, but um, they put me on blood thinners to dissolve it. And they said that it wouldn't be permanent. Um, because I don't have a history of, of blood clotting or anything like that. And so um, they put me on the blood thinner. They put me on a real strong one. And I, I, was, I just was really struggling. And I didn't have my mental clarity about me. Um, that was a time when I wasn't on here for a while. Because I just, there was just nobody home up here. <laughs> Seriously, it was awful. And so... My daughter started doing a lot of research and she found out um, that they had me on, she decided, and we approached the doctor with it, that they had me on too strong a dose for my age and my weight. And so um, the doctor was willing to reduce the dose so that I could function, and so I'm still on it. So my daughter also suggested that I go in for um, having my legs um, checked to see if there was any blood clots there because they found the one here. And I thought, well, I'm fine. I'm sure there's not any, but I don't care. If you want to insist on it, I'll have it done. And so I went in and I had that done in March and I went through a lot of red tape, finally got the results um, about three weeks ago. And there is a blood clot on my right leg um, in the biggest vein up in my thigh, which leads directly to the biggest vein to the heart. So I panicked just a little considering I'm a pretty healthy person, very healthy, I would say. And so I um, contacted the doctor, went in to see her, and she was not alarmed or concerned because she knew I was on the blood thinners, had been on the blood thinners. She knew I was healthy and I had no history of blood clots. And she believed that it is dissolving based on the results that she saw. Because when they did that test, I'd already been on the blood thinners for three months. And so she thinks that they were dissolving. And so she's 99% positive that they came from the virus and that um, they will dissolve and I'll be just fine and I can get off the blood thinner. So have any of you had the virus and had any been checked for blood thinner or blood clots? Have you had any that you're not normally prone to them? Um, how did it go? Um, did you, were you able to, did they put you on blood thinners? How long did it last? Were you able to get off? Any information you can share, I would be grateful for. And this video may be more about this kind of stuff than it is Father's Day, but I really wanna get it all in. So I have one more thing that I wanna to talk to you about. Um, that's important for me because it's upcoming tomorrow and I'm going to try and get this video posted today. Um, I am 79, as you know, and I am in need of cataract surgery. I haven't been able to wear eye makeup 
um, for about a month now, but, and I love my makeup, so I'm missing my eye makeup. Um, so I went to the, I've been through all the doctors and they've run me through the gamut and decided step by step that it's time for this cataract surgery. I've knew, known that I had cataracts for a long time, um, but they were moving very slowly. Now, whether the virus progressed them in a hurry or not, I have no idea. Point is, they're here now and I cannot see well at all. And so I told the first doctor that, that does my six month examination. And she said, your eyes look fine, they're healthy, you're doing great, you do have your cataracts. And I said, well, yes, and that's a problem because I now can't see street signs. And so she sent me to the next doctor to see if glasses would help. And they examined me and they said, glasses won't help. And this is all within the same um, clinic office. They have all of the doctors there. And so she set me an appointment with the doctor that takes care of the cataracts. So I went in there three weeks ago because I'm due back tomorrow. And I ha he said, yes, it's time for cataracts. Two issues. Um, I have extremely dry eye because I had a, um, when I was 60, I had LASIK surgery. Um, one eye for distance, one eye for close up. And I love that. It worked great for many years and it's been 20 years. So then I started having to wear reading glasses, never had to wear anything for distance. That was still fine. Um, so let's see, where was I? So that was the Lasix. And then, so he, so I have dry eye. I had dry eye before I had the Lasix. Um, they were able to treat that and um, went ahead with the LASIK surgery because he said that would create dry eye. So over the years, the treatment has, you know, without explaining everything, the treatment's gone by the wayside and I have extreme dry eye again. And so this uh, doctor said that the dry eye would get worse with the cataract surgery. So he gave me some medicines, drops and different things to take for three weeks to see if it would lubricate them. Well, I've tried taking all of the medicines and they either burn my eyes worse, um, upset my stomach, gave me a headache, all kinds of things. And so I had an ointment that I was taking and then I had um, kind of a foam thing for cleaning my eyes. So I went back to doing that and I've been doing it every day. My eyes are still dry, of course, I feel it but they feel better than they did. And I've been doing that for three weeks. And so I'm going in tomorrow and I'm sure he's not gonna be happy when I tell him what happened with the medications that he gave me and I wasn't able to take them, but it is what it is. And so the other thing that I'm going in for tomorrow is they're going to um, measure my, or they're first they're going to put a uh, plug, I think in the outer corner of the eye, you have two tear ducts in both eyes, one here and one here. And so he's gonna put a plug, hopefully in this one, because if he puts it in this one, I'll lose it again like I did before. And the idea for the plugs is that you create tears. And so if I can create the tears, then it'll be easier to get through the LASIK surgery. So if you have any thoughts on any of that, if any of you have had dry eye, anything you've done for it, any success, any failures, <laughs> I'm open to everything. And one more piece of it is that he said that the LASIK surgery would, oh, I told you that LASIK, the, the, the cataract surgery would make the dry, eye, dry eyes drier, the eyes drier. Sorry, I'm trying to, my brain's thinking quicker than my mouth. Um, but there was one more point on that. Um, oh, shoot. I can't remember what it was. The LASIK is gonna make it, oh, because I had the LASIK surgery, 20 years ago. He's like, it makes it harder for them to do the cataract surgery because they need to try to match the numbers, whatever numbers those are for my seeing distance and close up, I guess. Um, they're gonna try and match that. And so he said it makes it harder and the surgery may not work right. They may have to do a second surgery if they get the numbers backwards or wrong or whatever. So I'm very scared. And I'm asking for prayers and any ideas, suggestions, help, tips, um, anything you've got to share, I'd be grateful 
at this point for whatever you can share. So that's that. And um, I really, I hate to jump into two different subjects with you and I have no idea how long I've been going on this one. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay, good. So I've got another five to 10 minutes to talk about Father's Day. So that's my health story and I'm open for anything you guys can share. And now I'd like to switch gears and kind of talk about Father's Day weekend. And also in advance, I would like to ask you that um, anything that you experienced on Father's Day weekend, whether it was any good things or bad things, or if you had any ideas or tips on what made it easier or better, um, share it with us, please, because we all learn and grow from each other because we're all just one big family here, right? So um, I wanna ask you to do that for us because um, we just help each other. And speaking of asking you for things, um, thank you for watching my videos and for subscribing. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe um, if you're liking the videos and hit the little bell over there so that you can be notified uh, when I have another video coming out. And also, if you're on Facebook and you would like to um, maybe get to know me a little better and I can get to know you a little better, then I really want to ask you to join me on Facebook. Just find me and friend me. I'm the only one in there under Connie Norlean, N-O-R-L-E-E-N. And find me and friend me. And then please send me a private message because sometimes the friend requests get lost. And I want to know if you've friended me because it's my goal to just make friends with the world and love on as many people as I can. And you know that about me, so you know it's true. Um, so find me on Facebook if you, if you're on Facebook and let's be friends there too. And then we'll just double up on our friendship and, and you'll make even more friends because of the friends I have. So thank you for all of that. I look forward to seeing you on Facebook and now let's talk about Father's Day. So, um, Sunday I went to lunch with a good friend of mine of 20 years and our husbands passed seven months apart hers passed first and gar was second um we went to the same church together we did everything together and then we've kind of drifted apart i don't know if it was the guys that held us together or if we just were both such a mess that we had to just find other directions to get some sanity and find out what our path was going to be separate from each other and yet still being friends and so we went to lunch on Father's Day to celebrate our birthdays because mine's in May and hers is in June. We had a great lunch, had a lot of fun, got to celebrate together, went to Blank Black Angus. If you're from California, you may know where that is. And we went to the one on um, Tustin Avenue. I don't know what city, Orange, Tustin, Santa Ana. I don't know, <laughs> but it was on Tustin Avenue. And so we went there and we had a great time. Um, we talked, we catched up, catched up, we caught up. It was wonderful. So prior to that, um, I had a trigger on Saturday. And honestly, I don't even remember what it was or when it was. But sometime during the day or late afternoon, early evening, I had a trigger. And um, I just did a lot of crying and a lot of thinking and processing and um, missing Gar. And this is my third year um, without him on Father's Day. I think maybe what it might have been was my daughter, and I had said this to someone, and I think when I told him the story, I think it kind of triggered me. Um, my youngest daughter went to um, Lake Havasu with her family and some cousins from Indiana, and they all met there um, for their trip that they do once a year. And those, they decided to do it on Father's Day. And so my daughter thought, well, sadly, my dad's not here. I don't have any reason to stay here and, and celebrate Father's Day. Um, it'll just make me sadder. And so she left and they all went to the river and they had a wonderful time and I'm really happy for them. And I wasn't alone on Father's Day because I was with my friend for like, oh, probably five hours. We came back to the house and we talked for a long time. 
And so I wasn't alone on Father's Day, but on I didn't know I was going to be with her that long and have people around me. And so Saturday night, and that hit me. And um, so then I, I did my share of grieving again. I told you it comes on and you just don't know when. So um, then I got ready Sunday morning and I watched my church online and I got ready and um, went with my friend for lunch. And then she came back over here and we visited. And we both talked, but I felt like I'd had the monopoly on the conversation and I felt really bad about that. Um, I tried to not to because I didn't want to make it a downer time for us because we hadn't been together in like two months. Um, but it just kept welling out and she's, she's a great friend. She's good to talk to and, and she's a great listener. And so they just kept bubbling out and I just kept saying things and saying things. And, um, here's what I came up with and she didn't help me come up with these. It was just, I just bubbled over to her. And then later I had, um, my friend Stephanie, um, from Northern California asked me how my day was. And I said, well, <laughs> it was very cathartic, very healing, very emotional. And the bottom line was that I ended up, believe it or not, in a lot of gratitude. And I'll, touch on that um, for just a couple of minutes. What I was, my gratefulness at the end of the day, when my friend Marianne left, my gratefulness was spilling out. Because when you're in, when you're going through your beginning grieving process, um, you may not remember who was there or who wasn't there or a lot of things. And so um, I had a couple of people that weren't there and I had a couple of people that were there. Both were surprises to me. I expected the ones to be there that weren't and the ones that were, I didn't expect. So, um, but even the ones that weren't there, they played a significant role. And so somehow after I got all of that out to Marianne, and that's why I say the, the grief share groups are so important. And if you need to go back through them again, absolutely do that because you can go as many times as you want. So maybe if it's been a while, maybe you wanna seek them out again and just go through another 12 week course because you'll probably have new things come up. And so I don't have time to go into, cause I know I always tell you guys the time. Ugh, I hate when I do that, but I don't wanna go over, I want, I want to, keep you guys with me because this is important to me and I wanted to share it. And so my gratitude um, really came, it was so many things like Marianne, the very first day when Gar passed, she was going home as the fire truck was here and her heart just dropped to her stomach because she knew. So she parked the car and came running in. She was here all day, she was here all night. She slept with me that night. We both slept in lazy boy chairs next to each other and God bless her. I know that was uncomfortable for her. Um, I have a neighbor that is not a real um, warm fuzzy kind of gal and she would come over and check on me every single morning. And one morning she came in and I opened the door and I just burst into tears. And not being, I mean, I've never hugged her in my life and I've known her for probably 12 years. And she walked in and I started crying and she said, "Ah." somebody needs a hug and she hugged me and it was the sweetest thing and she has just had my back for three and a half years she really has she has been there never skipped a beat and so I love her for that and um both my daughters in their own way for the time that they were there and my um, brother-in-law and sister-in-law and my brother-in-law is now passed for the time that they came over that day and I'm like no I don't want anybody here no tell them to stay home and they came over and they were so helpful and my one grandson and his wife no no I don't need anybody they came over and oh my gosh I had 
an ant farm blow up in my master bathroom that day. And they were here. And I came out and I'm just a blubbering idiot mess. I was a mess. All over the ants because, you know, it was just one more thing. <laughs> and so they're like, very calm and they're like, well, where's the nearest Home Depot? And they left and they came back and they took care of them, killed all the ants, cleaned it up. I never never thought about it again, never knew anything about it and the ants didn't come back. I don't know what that was about, but they took care of it for me. So many things like that, people were there. And I've never taken the time to thank them. And so I'm doing that now. I wrote it on Marianne's birthday card. Maybe it should have been a separate card, but I wrote it on her card. And I'm sending out cards. I'm going to write notes to all of those people, whether it was a little bit or a lot, no matter how big or small. I wanna thank them for being there for me, for everything that they did or the little bit that they did because it all counted and it all added up to me not having a nervous breakdown that day. And I'm so grateful to everybody in my life. And you know, a while ago I talked about um, regrets because I hadn't really sat down with my grandchildren. Um, I still haven't done that with two of them. So I need to sit down with them over the next 30 days and do that. Um, because the oldest one is getting so busy, I'm never going to be able to see her. She's kind of she's having a blast with her life, and, and I love that. But I want to sit down with her, and then I want to sit down with my grandson. And he's always a card, so I don't know if he'll be serious, but he's got my heart. Man, he's just the sweetest, kindest, honoriest 15-year-old young man. He's precious, and he loves his grandma. And so I want to sit down with those two, and then I feel like I will have touched base with all of them. And then right now, my goal in the next week is to sit down and finish writing all of these thank you notes. Gratitude for all of these people that were in my life. And I'm also gonna send out a general gratitude. In fact, I may do a Facebook Live on that. I think I will. Um, for the, all of my Facebook friends that have been there for me, they supported me and they loved on me and they sent me private messages and they, Oh my gosh, the love that was just poured out. Those that had lost husbands and, and those that hadn't lost husbands and, and they were just there for me. And um, I'm at a place now where evidently the gratitude just poured out of me after I poured out my grief to Marianne that day, which was not the first time. And so now I'm in gratitude. And so that's where I am, and uh, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. I wanted to tell you about my health and see if you have any thoughts, ideas, suggestions, um, bad news, good news, whatever. And I wanted to let you know about my gratitude for Father's Day. And I think it's real important. So I don't know, maybe you're at a stage where I was before and you have some regrets where maybe you didn't sit down with the family members and let them share how they felt because you were too caught up in how you felt, right? And then maybe you're in a stage where I am and maybe you'll have some gratitude. So have your heart be open, talk to God about it, ask him to lead you and guide you in what's next for you. And, um, and if there's anything special that you need to do, like what I've suggested today. And so for that, I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being here and listening to me today. And uh, hopefully I gave you some thoughts or tips or ideas or you gave me some. So uh, please know from the bottom of my heart that if nobody else tells you today, I love you. Have an awesome, blessed week, and come back and see me next time, won't you? Have a good day. Bye for now.